This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, a year on from a sizable fire, the rebuild of St Paul's Cathedral is humming along, but there's more to do. Scenic Circle's Princess Street Hotel is set to reopen after it was mothballed last year due to COVID-19. And the photographic history of South Otago is being brought to life as a local historian is digitising old photographs. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. One year on from a fire at St Paul's Cathedral, the multi-million dollar rebuild is underway. The very reverend Dr Tony Curtis had an unwelcome early phone call on August 11 last year when he was told the iconic church he's dean of was on fire. At 3.30am on August the 11th last year, fire crews were called to St Paul's Cathedral at the top of the octagon. Dean of Dunedin, the very Reverend Tony Curtis, was at the scene early on. He says a fair bit of progress has been made a year down the track. Well, it's been a long, hard job. Uh, not to uh, beat about the bush. You know, it's, it's taken quite some time for us to get everything properly made safe, we've had discussions with the insurers, we've had to demolish quite a lot of this, the roof of the new part of the building, the apse, which we're standing in now. He says it's been a pretty challenging year, with a lot of work completed so far, but so much more to do. Father Curtis, who has a background in large project management in the UK prior to becoming ordained, is thankful the church was insured. We are probably looking at seven figures of insurance work to complete all that, putting the, uh, the roof back together and repairing a lot of the damage in the building. But we're also going to take the opportunity that has been brought by what wasn't a great event, what wasn't something I would have looked for, but we're hoping to sort of rise from the ashes and produce something that's going to be better for our worshipping community and better for the people of Dunedin as well. The project cost is estimated to be about four million dollars to repair and significantly upgrade many areas of the historic building, which took four years to build, work beginning in 1915. The Dean of Dunedin says the church is consulting with many groups to make the cathedral a welcoming environment for all peoples. A cathedral really exists for the city that it sits in and our job is to do the very best we can to welcome and be there for and pray for uh, the people of God in Otago and Southland. That's what we've always been here for and we hope we'll be able to do it even better in the future. Father Curtis says they're thankful to some benefactors who've bequeathed funds for rainy day projects like this. In February 2019, St Paul's marked 100 years of consecration. In Dunedin, the South Today. Police say a 61-year-old pedestrian was really lucky to escape injury after he was hit by a car in Mosgiel yesterday evening. Senior Sergeant Craig Dennison says the 20-year-old male driver of the car was heading along Gordon Road and turned left onto Factory Road when he hit the pedestrian about 6.30pm. The driver claimed to have not seen the pedestrian due to his dark clothing and the poor weather conditions. The pedestrian saw a green light and believed it was for him. Police say the 61-year-old pedestrian was able to walk home after the incident. However, they're investigating and want to hear from witnesses. A major Dunedin hotel which was mothballed at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic is reopening. The hotel's manager says the thing he's missed most over the last year and a half is the regular interaction with visiting tourists. After being shut since the country's borders closed and kept tourists away, the scenic hotel in central Dunedin is set to reopen in two and a half months' time. During the hotel's closure, General Manager Adrian Clifton spent some time working in other hotels belonging to the scenic circle chain, and he realised how much he's looking forward to having the hotel filled with guests again. I've missed talking to people, basically. <laughs> so I've had a couple of spells away, you know, sort of, uh, at uh, other hotels, and. Uh, 
there, you know, I just spent most of the time at reception talking to people and uh, it's, it's something I've missed. The hotel lost its soul really without people here, that's what uh, makes it come alive and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I can't wait for it to be back. Before COVID-19, the hotel had about 50 staff, of whom almost all have moved on. As a result, Clifton is now having to build up a new workforce from scratch. There's not that many around, um, and um, whilst we're, you know, we're fully prepared to train everybody that comes here, it's, uh, you, you need a little bit of experience within the, within the team. We previously had a team of um, about 50 staff, so um, it's vastly reduced. We want to start small and build with there with the business. The hotel was set to open briefly as a trial run late next month for a proposed rugby test match between the All Blacks and South Africa. Over hibernation, the hotel was regularly aired out and underwent a deep clean, but there's still a bit of work to do to make the establishment livable again. At the moment, the, the, the hotel rooms are, um, beds are made and that sort of thing. We, we need to air out the mattresses, air out the, um, the, the bedding, etc. So um, we put fresh bedding on when people are starting up again. So it's making up all those rooms. It's making sure they're all clean and tidy and... Uh, dust free that we put back in, the, the crockery and the glassware that's been freshly washed etc. The Scenic Hotel also plans to undergo a refurbishment once it's reopened, meaning the number of available beds will not be at full capacity for some time. In Dunedin, the South today. A covering has been removed and scaffolding remains around part of an extensive repair project at the Dunedin railway station. Workers concentrating on the north end of the building, including removal of the roof, replacement of timber and damaged tiles, lead work in stonework repairs and repainting. The contract for the first stage was awarded to Naylor Love, with the work costing around $1 million. Stage 1 of the three-stage upgrade of the Category 1 historic place began last November and was completed in June. The project is due to be completed in 2023. Anyone in the Clutha district who has old historical photographs or books relating to the area was invited to bring them to the Lawrence Public Library for digital scanning. The scanned images are going into an online database for the public to browse and learn about the area's history. Clutha District Council's Community Heritage Coordinator Tiffany Jenks is busy in Lawrence digitising hundreds of documents, photos and even oral histories. She set up a new website called Clutha Heritage as a pilot to see if the Clutha community is keen to have an online record of earlier times. She says this photo from the early 1970s of the Lawrence Catholic Church congregation is getting a lot of interest from the public. I think people have been engaging with that so much is because it's a group photo and people recognise people and they say oh that's so and so or that's me or that's my dad and so it's really people engaging with people in their history. Since she started two months ago Jenks has digitised over 600 items that community groups and members of the public have brought in and she's hoping for more to come. I'm really looking for people who have old photographs um, archival material, um, people that have good stories to share on an oral history. Um, yeah, I'm looking for people to work with that can help me share the stories of our district. Um, I'm not an expert on the history of the whole Clutha district, but there's individuals in our community who know a lot of history and I want to find those people and um, work with them to share our stories. Jenks says a number of the old photographs and books have come to her through word of mouth. The more people you meet, the more people you talk to, they tell you, oh, so-and-so's got that, or you should go and talk to them, they've got a great story. So it's just um, building community relationships. Jenks is based at the Lawrence Public Library until early September, and then she plans to move her digital scanner up to the Milton Public Library to continue her work there. In Lawrence, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, the Otago Regional Council claims there are a host of contaminated sites around Dunedin. 
and a new stadium opens in Rangiora. We'll see you after the break. Hi, it's Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We have a massive manufacturer's clearance plus this liquidated stock from our suppliers. For example, we have cotton casual trousers from 1990, dress trousers from 1990, merino zip pullovers, fashion shirts, warm winter shirts, jackets. There's a great deal on overcoats, blazers and suits. Come and check out our jeans. We're known for our jean selection. Alex Campbell Menswear. Come in and see the massive manufacturer's clearance at Alex Campbell Menswear. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. MOMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Be sure to tune in to Football Chat every week where we chat about local football fixtures, results and everything else that's happening in the local game. Ah, TV. Our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Welcome back. A fake fundraising page set up for Olympic cyclist Olivia Podmore has been slammed by her family. 24-year-old Olivia Podmore represented New Zealand at the 2016 Rio Olympics and died suddenly on Monday. On Tuesday evening, her brother Mitchell Podmore shared a screenshot of a fake fundraising page called Help Olivia Podmore, created by what claims to be Team Podmore. This morning, family spokesperson Mike Pirro said the only official fundraising taking place was through an internal Mike Pirro group. The number of contaminated sites appears to be on the rise in Otago, but the increase could be due to residential developments uncovering previously unidentified dirty sites. The Otago Regional Council says it knows of 49 contaminated sites across the region, including this former gas works site on Hillside Road. The number is up by almost half as much again compared to 12 years ago when there were only 30 contaminated sites across Otago. The council says the apparent increase is due to a direct relationship between urban development and the identification of contaminated sites. At present, two-thirds of registered contaminated sites are on land proposed for residential use. A new sports stadium was opened in Rangiora over the weekend. Those behind the project say the $28 million facility will serve the community well, not just in sports, but also health and well-being. It's our pleasure to declare that the uh, main power stadium officially open. 
Why Makariri Mayor Dan Gordon cuts the ribbon to open Rangiora's new main power stadium. North Canterbury Sport and Recreation Trust CEO Michael Sharp says the $28 million facility will be able to serve community members of all ages. It's going to be really a hub uh, from two-year-olds all the way through to over 90-year-olds, um, not only just in sport, from grassroots through to um, national sports people, um, through to uh, fitness and well-being and health. The building has been a good 20 years in the planning, having been delayed by the devastating earthquakes of 10 years ago. With cafes, fitness gyms and meeting rooms, the facility will hopefully become a mainstay of the Waimakariri community. Just with the um, smoothie bar and all of that, it's a great place to actually come as well. And with all the other adjoining sports, the tennis, the hockey, the uh, cricket just down the road, the football across the road, um, it's a real hub of, uh, of North Canterbury, not just Rangiora. The court areas are marked out for basketball, netball, volleyball, korfball, futsal and badminton. And Sharp is keen to point out the range of sports and health and wellbeing services the Main Power Stadium can provide to the community are second to none. Probably um, there is other down in Southland and all of that, um, parts of larger ones like that, but for its size, um, just yeah, all of the add-ons I call it, uh, that really complements to a multi-sport complex, and, yeah, there's no other facility like this one. The new facility is nestled in a growing sports hub including the Rangiora showgrounds, a cricket ground, hockey turf, football grounds and a dozen tennis courts that are still under construction. In Rangiora, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, we check in with progress at an expanding landfill and we take a look at the weather. Hi, it's Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We have a massive manufacturer's clearance plus this liquidated stock from our suppliers. For example, we have cotton casual trousers from 1990, dress trousers from 1990, merino zip pullovers, fashion shirts, warm winter shirts, jackets. There's a great deal on overcoats, blazers and suits. Come and check out our jeans. We're known for our jean selection. Alex Campbell Menswear. Come in and see the massive manufacturer's clearance at Alex Campbell Menswear. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Welcome back. A controversial landfill decision that was vehemently opposed by a community group is one step closer to becoming reality. 
The Environment Court yesterday revealed no appeals have been made against the recent decision to allow AB Lime to operate its Winton landfill under new conditions. The fertiliser quarry now has no limit on the amount of waste it can receive over the next 25 years. The company previously said it hoped to become the premier landfill for the Lower South Island. A group objecting to the landfill had 15 working days to appeal the decision, but says the short time frame made an appeal totally unrealistic. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. A year on from a sizeable fire, the rebuild of St Paul's Cathedral is humming along, but there's more to do as they consult the community. Scenic Circles Princess Street Hotel is set to reopen after it was mothballed last year due to COVID-19's effect on tourism. And a photographic history of South Otago is being brought to life as a local historian is digitising old photographs for the greater good. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Craig. Good evening. Good evening. I think we've got more on the uh, Tim Shabbolt saga out in Invercargill, and it's becoming quite a saga down there because we had the story this morning where he was uh, um, yeah, claiming that the councillors were taking a vote of no confidence uh, in him. They denied that. However, today they're, they're suggesting that they're going to try and get the numbers and, and instigate a, a vote of no confidence in him. Um, Shabbat's responded by suggesting he's the target of workplace bullying with, by councillors at the moment and is looking to do something about that as well. So yeah, it's all getting a bit sad and, <clears throat> and a bit ridiculous down there at the moment. Um, Tim shebelt has been such a great ambassador for Invercargill for so many years and it's just kind of sad to see it all disintegrating at the moment. So uh, hopefully some common sense will prevail at some stage. Um, John Minto uh, in town today and of course he was one of the key people for the anti-Springbok tour movement for the 1981 Springbok tour of New Zealand. Um, he was Today's marks the anniversary of the Otago South African game uh, back in 1981 and, and uh, John Minto was amongst that of course. There was a thousand or so protesters marching around Carisbrook that day. He led them so he's back in down today doing a bit of a tour of the country I guess to mark that tour. Um, he was from South Dunedin, brought up in South Dunedin and said it was a great day for, New, uh, for Dunedin with seeing so many people out there. Um, getting a voice really, uh, which Dunedin hadn't been renowned for previously. Um, thankfully Dunedin didn't have the violence of some of the other centres but um, they certainly made their mark and he, he was pretty proud of the way we behaved. So nice story on that. Sporting front, um, <coughs> got quite a candid interview with the Targo cricketing great Susie Bates. Um, She's poised to make a comeback to the sport. She's been injured since November with a shoulder injury, but uh, is ready to go back on tour of England. But um, she, yeah, she, t she talks about the mental pressure of high level sport and it's become quite topical in, in recent times. Um, two of her teammates now with Sophie Devine and Amelia Kerr have both taken breaks because of the sport, because of, of mental health. And of course we saw the Olympics as well with Simone Biles um, stepping down. And of course the tragic death this week um, of Olivia Podman as well, which has shocked so many people. Um, Su Susie talks about this being a bit of a wake-up call for, for sport, you know, I think all of us think they've got a great life as sports people, we'd all like to do it. If, um, but she said there's a lot of pressure on, um, it's all about achieving results and of course their future depends on their performance as well. So uh, yeah, quite an interesting interview and well worth to read that. And a bit of a bonus in tomorrow's ODT as well, um, it's our quarterly publication focusing on farming, so that'll be out with your ODT. Everything you've ever wanted to know about sheep, cows and much, much more. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you, Craig. Cheers. Now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Starting with the southern view, a stunning late winter's morning at Otago Harbour. Looking at the situation, a cool southwesterly change will spread north on Thursday with more widespread showers later in the day. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, rain and 13 degrees for Greymouth and Westport. To the northeast, mostly cloudy with 15 degrees in Nelson and 17 in Blenheim. To Canterbury, mostly cloudy here as well with 13 degrees in Kaikoura, 16 in Christchurch and 15 in Ashburton. For the southern towns, fresh northwesterlies, cloud increasing, and 14 degrees for the Catlins and Balclutha. 
Fresh northwesterlies, mostly cloudy and 13 degrees for Lumsden and Gore. To the central lakes area, fresh northwesterlies, some cloud and 13 degrees for Queenstown, Wanaka and Alexandra. Tiano can expect fresh northwesterlies, rain and 12 degrees. To the northern towns, light winds, fine conditions and 15 degrees in Timaru. Moderate northerlies, some high cloud and 15 as well for Oamaru. Inland, fresh northwesterlies and some clouds, 14 degrees for Twizel and 13 for Omarama. In Dunedin, high cloud tonight with a low of 8. High cloud increasing and thickening tomorrow with northerly winds becoming fresh and gusty. Some rain developing after dark with colder southwesterlies, a high of 16 and a low of 7. Becoming fine and sunny on Friday with southwesterlies dying out, a high of 12 and a low of 5. And in Invercargill, showers tonight with a low of 9. Rain tomorrow with strong northwesterlies at first. Colder southwesterlies developing during the afternoon with rain easing to showers, a high of 13 and a low of 9. Similar on Friday, a high of 13 and a low of 7. That's all for our news this Wednesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Kakite Noah. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.